Good, good afternoon, this is Rashad Mitchell coming to you live from the YouTube channel. It's like two more part series. The week that was college football history review the 1982 college football season. This is the major bowl games we're gonna be talking about. And then go over some other stuff regarding uh, the 82 season and uh take it from there. I may also get into the 1983 season, the overview. I use I separated, but I got time on my hands, so I'm going to do that too. So let's get into it. We're going to start with the Independence Bowl on December 11th. Wisconsin beat Kansas State 14-3 after four postseason losses. Badgers won first bowl game in school history against Kansas State squad, making bowl debut. Wisconsin quarterback Randy Wright threw two touchdowns and held Defensively, they held Kansas State to a lonely 29-yard field goal by a kicker, Steve Willis, which was scored after the Badgers lost fumble at own 18-yard line. Now, Wright shook off 9 of 24 air stats to hook up with wide receiver Tim Straka for play of game, 87-yard touchdown. Longest pass on school ledgers to close scoring in third quarter. Earlier, Wright had thrown 16-yard second quarter touchdown to wide receiver Michael Jones for game winner. Kansas State managed only 192 yards against Badgers defense led by nose guard Tim Cronrod, 13 tackles. Successfully clogged middle of line. The Wildcats quarterback Darrell Ray Dickey threw 13 of 35, 227 yards with end zone interception in the second half. Frigid conditions contributed to teams combining for five turnovers, 14 punts, and 14 penalties. Holiday Bowl, defensive December 17th, Ohio State beat Brigham Young 47-17. Playoff pundits must have love. Ohio State, which closed with its seventh win in a row. But guys erupted for 30 points in the second half as they spaded 66 carries for 345 yards. Long ground. Defense force. Route building turnover deep. And Cougars territory in third quarter. BYU quarterback Steve Young pitched seven yard touchdown pass in second quarter. And Cougars led seven to three. But but guys Tim Spencer the tailback who ran for 167 yards and 21 carries, two touchdowns exploded on 61-yard touchdown run in the second quarter for 10-7 lead. By the time Spencer scored again on 18-yard rush midway through third quarter, Ohio State had built a 24-10 lead. Buckeyes marched with second half kickoff to short touchdown blast by fullback Vaughn Ragnax and cornerback Garcia Lane picked off Young soon after the set up uh, Spencer's second touchdown. Next kickoff was fumbled to Ohio State to pose, pose it for kicker Rich Spangler's second field goal. Now linebacker Marcus Marek made eight tackles to launch school himself to the top of Ohio State's career list. In the Tangerine Bowl on December 18th, Auburn beat Boston College 33-26. In this matchup, it featured higher power offenses on both teams and also showcased future Heisman Trophy winners. And the game was a thriller because Boston College scored first on 79-yard drive that displayed quarterback Duff with his scrambling ability. Cap drive with five yard touchdown run. Auburn stormed back with option attack, showing surprisingly balanced as game MVP. Quarterback Randy Campbell completed eight of 10 for 147, 146 yards in the first half to lead Tigers for a 23 10 halftime lead. Auburn still ran, gaining 313 yards on the ground, scoring touchdowns on one yard and six yard runs by halfback Bo Jackson. Two-yard run by halfback Willie Howard. And 15-yard run by fullback Greg Pratt. Top Tigers ground gainer was halfback Lionel Thomas. Sweet Lionel James with 101 yards and 17 carries. Tigers deployed five and at times six-man defensive backfield to limit uh, damage by Flutie's aerial attacks. Now, Flutie still completed 22 or 38, 299 yards, two touchdowns, but through two to interceptions was sacked four times. After their opening possession, Eagles were unable to return to Auburn's end zone until late in the fourth quarter. By then, Flutie's touchdown passed up two yards to tight end Scott Nizolet and for 16 yards wide receiver Brian Brennan were too little too late. Sunball, December 25th, North Carolina beat Texas 26-10. With terrific win at backs, Tar Heels scorched Texas for 23 fourth quarter points on four scoring drives and touchdown by defense, sticking with ground game. Spark by 119 yards from tailback Ethan Horton. A defense that changed momentum of game with goal line stamp early in the third quarter 
North Carolina set up 47 yard field goal by Bob Rob Rogers, who had hit 53 yard effort in second quarter on first play with win in fourth quarter. Now, trailing 10 6, Rogers then recovered on onside kickoff at Texas 47 yard line to set up 23 yard field goal by short distance kicker Brooks Barwick. Ahead 10 9, Longhorns were unable to move ball. Texas was limited even with win as quarterback Robert Brewer broke thumb five days earlier and was replaced by sophomore quarterback Todd Dodge, who managed only 6 of 22 50 yards. Corp Carolina moved to winning 42 yard field goal by Barwick before adding two insurance, 10 touch, two insurance touchdowns in the final 217 as linebacker Chris Woods' inception set up Horton's touchdown run and linebacker Michael Moon sack Dodge to force from recovery in the end zone by linebacker Thomas Wilcher. Held about held to 48 yards in the second half. Texas gained only 130 yards total. Offense 234 yards by North Carolina Longhorns special teams ace Ronnie Mullins had scored touchdowns on end zone recovery, a punt block in first quarter. Now, key to this game was Tarheel's ability to handle the snow and the wind. Believe it or not, we practice in weather worse than this bat. Home, preparing for the game, said North Carolina coach Dick Crump, now 6 0 career in bowls at that time. In the Aloha Bowl on December 25th, Washington beat Maryland 21 20. As Maryland's possible victory in the inaugural Aloha Bowl went south quickly in the fourth quarter. Ahead 20 14 with less than five minutes to go, Terrapins kicker Jeff Atkinson missed that could have been a clinching 32 yard field goal. Huskies took over and marched 80 yards to score on 11 yard pass from quarterback Tim Cowan to wide receiver Anthony Allen with six seconds left. Washington All American kicker Chuck Nelson added winning extra point. Cowan, who threw 333 of 55, 369 yards. Hooked up with Allen on who caught eight passes for 852 yards and three touchdowns, including a 27 yard pass to open the score, to open the scoring in the first quarter. So Maryland scored next by scoring from by Washington Telbet, struggling highs on Huskies 19 yard line into six yard touchdown pass. Quarterback Boomer Sison to fill back Dave D. Adio. Uh, Terps uh, settled for 7 6 deficit as extra point was missed. After the teams traded touchdowns with Allen, catching 71 yard pass, Terps tight end John Tice, catching 36 yard touchdown, a size and led 86 yard drive to go ahead, two yard touchdown run by running back John Nash early in the fourth quarter. Cowan own possession last running or passing of 15 of winning drives, 16 plays. Cowan thrice, twice, converted fourth downs. Twice on the runs in leading winning rally. Liberty Bowl, December 29th. Alabama beat Illinois 21 15. Illinois uh, picked the wrong bowl and wished to return to postseason. She went the 19 yard absence, fired up Alabama. Looked to send coach Bear Bryant out as winner of final game. Big hits by Christian Todd defense forced Illinois quarterback Tony Easton from game on three different occasions. Backup quarterback Chris Jenner saw all three of his pass attempts in the second. When Easton was in play, he set Liberty Bowl records for total offense, passing yards, attempts, and completions. He also set up an interception mark with four. Illinois trailed 7-6 at halftime as offense blew in his chances with four drives ending or such a deep in other than territory and another on missed field goals. Now, tied star cornerback Jeremiah Castillo had three interceptions, two coming deep in his own. 13 and 22 yard lines. Alabama up the lead to 14 6 in third quarter on eight yard reverse run by wide receiver Jesse Bendros. Illinois got act together and built off the next nine points on Easton's two yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Oliver Williams and kicker Mike Bass' 23 yard field goal. Alabama simply was not going to accept defeat because quarterback Walter Lewis led winning drive to one yard touchdown run by fullback Craig Turner. Score was 7-34 left. Illinois had plenty of time left, but tied defense came up with two big interceptions. Final drive began at Illinois 18 yard line. Easton completed three for three for 47 yards before exiting again with Uziness. Jenner came in, a linebacker Robbie Jones, still verdict with interception with 16 seconds left. Illinois wide receiver Mike Martin tied Liberty Bowl records with eight catches, 127 yards. 
Bear Bryant was escorted reverently off field afterward as team messed up opportunity to carry him to retirement on his shoulders. Regrettably, Bryant would die within a month. Gator Bowl, December 30th, Florida State beat West Virginia 31-12. Was it Florida State's defense or was it driving rain that stopped Mountaineers quarterback Jeff Hostetler? Hostetler completed only 10 for 28, 118 yards, two interceptions. It's West Virginia for the Swamp. Some of those surprise throw that quarterback was Blair Williams. Ignored weather to throw a 27 yard touchdown to Sky and wide receiver Dennis McKinnon. Lead offense to 461 yards. McKinnon ran 65 yards on end around by halfback Greg Allen. By 138 yards and 15 carries. Who led nation with 20 touchdowns. Scored twice in third quarter. Special teams came up big for each as 27 year old sophomore halfback Billy Allen. Returned second quarter kickoff 95 yards to end zone to give Florida State 10-3 lead. West Virginia wide receiver Willie Drury uh, returned punt 82 yards to ever shoot seven yard line. Drury pulled, pulled muscle on play, however, which prevented him from scoring. Rodney's were unable to cash in because kicker Paul Woodside missed field goal. Both return set Gator Bowl records. Wide receiver Darrell Miller scored sole touchdown for West Virginia on 26 yard pass from reserve quarterback Kevin White. Effort shoot safety Brian McCreary twice intercepted Ostella. Hall of Fame Bowl, December 31st, Air Force beat Vanderbilt 36 28. Vanderbilt was hoping to win nine games for the first time since 1915, turning things over to with their best shot. As any good little slinger must, from the builder, Vanderbilt senior quarterback Whit Taylor went out with guns blazing. Taylor threw 338, 51, 452 yards, four touchdowns. But when that many balls go airborne, bad things also happen. Taylor threw three interceptions with none more damaging than pickoff by Air Force defensive end Carl Dudani. Early in the fourth quarter at Vandy, 40 yard line, Dudani returned ball 19 yards, 19 yards to set up fullback John Kirchner's five yard turn touchdown run. Five plays later for 29-28 lead. Score was second or third of three touchdowns for Falcons, whose punishing run game wore down Commodore's defense. Now, Kirshner led the attack that made 315 yards by rushing up the gut for nearly half of his total. Uh, AFC, AFA, meaning Air Force Academy quarterback Marty Luthen added 74 yards and two touchdowns on the ground, including 46-yard run. A clinch game later in the fourth quarter. Other key stat was Falcons' lack of turnovers. Uh, Taylor's leading target was tailback Norman Jordan, who caught 20 passes for 173 yards and three touchdowns. Jordan's impressive reception total tied bowl game set record set by Richmond Rob receiver Walker Gillette in 1968 Tangerine Bowl. Peach Bowl, December 31st, Iowa beat Tennessee 28-22. Using three touchdowns second quarter to jump on Tennessee, Hawkeyes built lead big enough to withstand Volunteers' rally. With near perfection from quarterback Chuck Long, Iowa took 21 7 halftime lead as Long completed one first of 11 attempts. First 11 attempts ended first half with 229 yards and three touchdown passes. Volunteers cut into deficit with opening series of second half, which took nine plays to move 80 yards to senior touchdown run by a tailback Chuck Coleman. Long answered with 75 yards. Drives and what proved to be winning touchdown. A two-yard run by tailback Eddie Phillips. Volunteers quarterback Alan Cockrell later threw 19-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Gawk and led four-quarter drive to a 27-yard field goal by a kicker fraud reviews. But two other fourth-quarter trips were halted by Iowa defense. On final march, Volunteers advanced to Hawkeye's 39-yard line before sack and two incompletions. Forced fourth and 25 plays, so defensive end Sean Joseph squelched that with fumble-inducing hit on Cockwood. Wide receiver Dave Moritz was Long's favorite target with eight catches for 168 yards and 57-yard touchdown. While his wing back, uh, Ronnie Harmon, caught Long's other two touchdown passes on plays of 18 yards and eight yards. Though we bonded on December, we bonded ball on December 31st, Arkansas beat Florida 28-24. Arkansas corner quarterback Tom Jones made sure his final game was successful as he sparked calls to his fourth quarter 
passing and running touchdown that put it out. In closing, Jones had led a 78-yard march that eliminated final 629 of the clock. Now, after dust had settled, Arkansas' second half surge had been built on 302 yards offense with three touchdowns. Gates had built 10-point lead as quarterback Bob Huco, giving start in final game while receiving Dwayne Dixon. Combined on three touchdown passes, all capping drives of at least 74 yards. Hogs converted fumble by Gator fullback James Jones at midfield to scoring drive. Capped by 17 yards. Run by tailback Gary Anderson. Gators then scored 17 points to close out first half, scoring on two Huko touchdown passes. A 34 yard field goal by a kicker Bobby Raymond. After trade of third quarter touchdowns, Hogs stalked 35 yards. 85 yards to 5 yards scoring catch by fullback Jesse Clark and our next series held Florida on downs before ripping off 80 yard drive to winning touchdown on Jones one yard keeper. Arkansas defense led by All American defensive end Billy Ray Smith who had two sacks held again to set long time killing possession. Win was 100 win in the career for Arkansas coach Lou Holtz and he could thank offense for totaling 480 yards. Cotton Bowl Southern Methodists beat Pittsburgh 7-3. Undefeated Mustangs looked to claim share of title, impressive win, and sleet and rain. Pittsburgh was too good for that. However, especially with talent lady defense that promised that Pony Express tell that tandem of Eric Dickerson and Craig James would earn every yard. It was the same for dominating SNU defense, which played in shadow of offense. The Panthers came out with redesigned offense, offering quarterback Dan Marino four outside targets that surprised SNU enough to allow opening drive to reach his one yard line. Fullback Joe McCall then lost form to ball, hawking pony safety West Hopkins. It was Mustang's turn to display new offense, albeit formation that used in big Texas win at midseason. Playing Dickerson and James together with one as power back, SMU moved 92 yards against defense and 10 on leveling punishment. Panthers committed two personal foul and face mask penalties. Finally, on Pittsburgh's seven yard line, quarterback Lance McElhaney was stripped with funk recovered by Pittsburgh nose guard J.C. Pelusi. Game continued at Slowfest with missed 26 yard field goal by Pittsburgh kicker Eric Schubert. Maintained score to score for halftime. Schubert made amends with 43 yard field goal that ended third quarter drive. McElhaney then began to emulate Marino, his more famous pit counterpart, completing two passes 50 62 yards to wide receiver Bobby Leach. That moved the ball to Pittsburgh 20 yard line. From there, two runs by Dickerson and one by James put ball on the nine yard line. McElhaney like then ran options to his right, saw defense covering James, turned up, turned downfield, avoided safety Tom Flynn for touchdown. Pitt's best chance to retake the lead ended with Marino's end zone interception as throwing on um, run. He was picked off by safety Blaine Smith all deflection by Hopkins. For fifth time on season, the Mustangs of Southern Methodist. Had rallied to win, surprising defensive battle. Fiesta Bowl, Arizona State beat out of Oklahoma 32-21. to For Arizona State to win, it seemed its top-ranked defense would have to carry low-scoring game. Oklahoma was having none of it. They gained 457 yards of offense, surprisingly Sun Devils outscored Oklahoma in a shootout as quarterback Todd Hans threw for 329 yards, leading offense at 21 second-half points, while Arizona State defense recovered four fumbles. Riding heralded but Shelby tailback Marcus Dupree, who finished with 239 yards rushing, despite missing most of fourth quarter with hamstring injury pull. Sooners took a 7-0, 13 21-18 leaves, but could not hold off better condition Arizona State in fourth quarter. The Sun Devils had kept pace in first half with three field goals by kicker Luis Zendayas. And safety earned with defensive end Jim Jeff Cope trapped Alabama quarterback Kelly Phelps in the end zone. Teams traded third quarter touchdowns before Sun Devils took control of fourth quarter. Scoring touchdowns on one yard run by tailback Alvin Moore, 52 yard pass from Hans to wide receiver uh, Ron Brown. Arizona State defense had allowed an average of 95.4 yards, rushing 228 yard, 0.9 yards total during regular season. Marks Dupree and Oklahoma obliterated. Dupree simply was unstoppable despite being overweight and banged up. Rose Bowl. You had UCLA beat Michigan 24-14. The rubber game with three-game miniseries played out between teams after Michigan had beaten the Bruins 33-14 in 1981. 
Blue Bonnet Bowl before losing at home to UCLA in September. Position of safety really makes Hallett real, but UCLA safety Don Rogers clearly was Rose's star. First and foremost, Rogers intercepted pass by quarterback Steve Smith, one of four Michigan turnovers to none for UCLA by games in at Bruins 12 yard line that night. Wolverines finest drive the first half. Midway through the second half, so midway through the second quarter, beg your pardon, Rogers unloaded on Smith at the quarterback, gained eight yards on an option run, and sent Smith to the sideline with some raised shoulder. And came raw quarterback Dave Hall and went out went out with an option portion. Out went option portion of Michigan's offense. Also, Rogers was instrumental in blanking in wide receiver Anthony Carter. Carter caught five passes for only 59 yards. His two in the rounds were well defensed. He was forced into a uh, Punt fumble. Carter's fumble led to 39 yard field goal by kicker John Lee. And UCLA was up 10 0 at halftime. Michigan refused to fold, scoring on one yard reception by fullback Eddie Garrett. Bruins quarterback Tom Ramsey, who had scored team's first touchdown on one yard keeper, motivated his Bruins 80 yard downfield to gain 10 point edge. Ramsey completed 4 for 5 on said touchdown drive. Line title back. Sandy Andrews finished with nine yard dash. Bruins defensively, fittingly, iced the game as linebacker Blanchard Montgomery returned and intercepts a 10 yard for a touchdown. Commanding 24 7 lead. Two plays after the Michigan defense had halted tunnel back Kevin Nelson on fourth and goal from one yard line. Howell threw touchdown pass, another one, a four yard touchdown pass to fullback Dan Rice. But game was all over. A pair of MVPs was selected as Ramsey, who he wrote UCLA's record book and Rogers' first defensive player, so honored since 1967. Bruins coach Terry Downhill won his first bowl after going 0 2 and 1. Nebraska beat Louisiana State in the Orange Bowl 21 20. Game looked to be no contest early on as LSU went 3 and out on opening drive only to allow Cornhusker to march 51 yards and six plays. The fullback Mark Shellen's five yard touchdown run for sake of competition. Nebraska handed ball back to Tigers six times, four fumbles. They also muffed full goal attempt, failed to gain first down on fake punt. Fumbles by eye back Mike Rozier and wing back Irvin Fry led to two one yard runs for touchdowns by tailback Dalton Hilliard. And Tigers had 14 7 lead at halftime. Uh, she added three more in third quarter, converting yet another fumble into. 28-yard field goal by kicker Juan Latanzos. Quarterback uh, Turner Gill then stem, stem Tiger Surge. Marching hustles to 11-yard touchdown run by Rogier ahead 17-14. Uh, she was soon forced to punt. On 4th and 19 from home, 36-yard line. Punter Clay Parker was spooked by Nebraska rush and took off. He gained 12 yards with 7 yards to tie the first down. It was sparked by 30 yard pass to Friday, Gill had Nebraska and ends on soon after one yard keeper. The game was 21 17. Now, later in the fourth quarter, after Friday returned punt 43 yards, Huskers went for a kill. Fake field goal on LSU 17 yard line. But wide receiver Tim Brungard dropped Gill pass. Another Gill pass was picked off, and quarterback Allen Richard led Tigers downfield before Bentanzo's kicked 49 yard field goal. Huskers then ran out. Final 5-0-5. Sugar Bowl. Penn State beat Georgia 27-23. After undefeated teams in 1968-1969-1973 went titleless, Penn State finally won national championship with victory over top-ranked Georgia. The Bulldogs tell back Herschel Walker was focused on matchup. He faced determined Penn State defense, featuring many players who had shut down Heisman Trophy winner USC tailback Marcus Allen. And last season's Fiesta Bowl, they also had stopped future Heisman winner Penn State, I mean, and uh, Mike Vigier of Nebraska earlier in 1982. Walker topped both those totals. He had to earn every bit of his 103 yards on 28 carries. On 28 carries and 103 yards. Penn State quarterback Todd Blackledge came out firing, completing four straight, 74 yards of 80 yard opening drive against Georgia's secondary that led the nation in the session with 35 interceptions. Drive ended on a two yard touchdown run by tailback Kurt Warner, who had 117 yards, rushing 18 carries, two touchdowns for 7 0 lead. With Blackledge continuing to fling passes, wide receiver Kevin Ball returned three punts for 100 yards. 
nice quickly added another touchdown point for him. Nine yards out and two field goals by kicker Nick uh, against Santana uh, for 20 points. Um, Georgia could rush the only three points on his first threat until just before halftime. So he has clock near triple zeros in second quarter. Bulldogs quarterback John Lassinger performed his best impersonation of San Diego Chargers Dan Fouts. Lassinger hit passes of 17 13 and 16 yards to three different receivers. Just like that, Georgia was downfield and on scoreboard. Again, as wide receiver Herman Archie caught a 10 yard lob in the left corner of the end zone with five seconds left in the halftime and a half and a half. Bulldogs were back in business. Last year, completed passes of 25 yards and 11 yards to wide receiver Kevin Harris. Took offense 69 yards on opening drive in the third quarter to wide receiver's one, I mean, to Walker, Herschel Walker's one yard touchdown run. Penn State now led 20 to 17, but had stalled offense because Warner was on sideline with leg cramps and Bulldogs. Defense rattled. Black, backlash with sacks that were total five by game's end. So after the punt, Penn State defense came through again with interception by safety Mark Robinson to begin game clinching drive late in the third quarter. Warner limped on and off the field, running brilliantly when called on as he outrushed Curry, a Heisman Trophy winner and second straight bowl game. The Lions moved to uh, Georgia 47 yard line as the third quarter ended. Then Blackledge went deep on play that would make unheralded wide receiver Greg Garrity with 116 yards receiving on four catches an all time line hero for Penn State. He beat freshman safety Tony Flack. Garrity dove to catch ball at goal line and land in the end zone for Big Ten. Big touchdown for a 27 17 lead. Ball's punt from return fumble. Return fumble was covered at Penn State 43 yard line. Last year soon completed nine yard touchdown pass to tight end Clarence K. Bulldogs opted for the touch two points, with Walker being stuck by Lions defense, led by defensive end Walker Lee Ashley. There was 3.54 left in the game, which Lions killed as Blackledge and Gary teamed up a five-yard pass on first down. Now that concludes a look at the bowl games from 1982. Let's get into AP poll, the final AP poll, January 2nd. We got the top 20 right here. Number 20, Maryland, 19, West Virginia, 18, North Carolina, 17, Texas, 16, Oklahoma, 15, Southern California, 14, Auburn, 13, Florida State, 12, Ohio State, 11, Louisiana State, number 10, Pittsburgh, number 9, Arkansas, 8, Clemson, 7, Washington, 6, Arizona State, 5, UCLA, number 4, Georgia, 3, Nebraska, 2, Southern Methods, and the number 1 team in the country, the national champions, Penn State, and the Lions. Number one team in the country. So that concludes a look at that. Now it's time to get to the stats, team wise, and statistical leaders and things of that nature. Here we go. We're going to go with 1982 top performance former was Penn State. They were number one. Top opponent's record was Penn State. They were number one. 1982 out of conference records, the number one conference was Pacific 10. Had a 25 10 and 1 record with a percentage of 7083. 3-0 record in the bowl. Now, here's the 1982 individual statistical leaders. With the rushing yards, we got Ernest Anderson, Oklahoma State. He led the nation in rushing 353 yards. Ernest Anderson, Oklahoma State, 353 attempts. Becky Parton, 353 attempts for 1,877 yards. Average 5.3 yards a carry. The passing yards, you got Todd Dillon from Long Beach State. He had 289 completions, 504 attempts. 3,517 yards at 57.3 percentage. Receiving yards, you had Henry Eller, freshman state, 62 catches, 1,510 yards receiving. Sixty-two catches, 1,510 yards. That's the receiving yards for that. Henry Eller, he was the uh, main guy. Sixty-two catches, 1,510 yards receiving. Two catches, 1,510 yards receiving. Now let's look at the 1982 consistent All-American team. You got the wide receivers for the offense. Anthony Carter was uh, Michigan. Was uh, for the wide receivers. Anthony Carter, Michigan. Tight end Gordon Hudson, BYU. The offensive line had Don Mosbaugh, Southern California. Steve Corte, Arkansas Jimbo, Carver, Pittsburgh Bruce Matthews, Southern California. The center Dave Rimton, Nebraska. The quarterback, John Elway, Stanford. The running back field was Herschel Walker, Georgia, Eric Dixon, SMU. And you got Mike Rogier, Nebraska. And place kicker, Chuck Nelson, Washington. 
Defensive for the defense, defensive lineman was led by Billy Ray Smith, Arkansas, Vernon Maxwell, Arizona State, Mike Pitts, Alabama, Wilbur Marshall, Florida, Gabriel Rivera, Texas Tech, Rick Bryan, Oklahoma. The middle guard was George Achika, George Southern California, the linebacking core, Darrell Talley, West Virginia, Ricky Hundley, Arizona State, Marcus Morat, Ohio State, the backfield, defensive backfield, the secondary, Terry Kennard, Clemson, Mike Richardson, Arizona State, Terry Hodge, Georgia, and Vanderbilt punter was Jim Arnold. The Heisman Trophy vote for 1982. Heisman was won by Herschel Walker, junior tailback of Georgia, finished with 1,926 votes. John Elway, senior quarterback of Stanford, finished with 1,231 votes. Eric Dixon finished third, senior tailback, Southern Methodist, finished with 465 votes. Anthony Carter, senior wide receiver, Michigan, finished with 142 votes. Dave Remington, senior quarterback, we senior center, Nebraska finished with 137 votes. Major awards. You got Maxwell Player of the Year, award winner, and World to Camp. Winners like Herschel Walker. Outland Trophy, Lombardi Trophy winner, Dave Remington. Todd Blackledge, Davey O'Brien. Uh, AOCA Coach of the Year, uh, Joe Turner. So that includes a look at the whole 1982 college football season. Has come to a close. Uh, finish with looking at, looking at the bowl games as well as uh, the stats that took place for uh, the bowl, the, the season, and the stats that came about with the season and the All American team, Heisman Trophy winner, all the stats and all that good stuff. I'm withhold from the meeting doing stuff with uh, the 1983 college football season. I'll say that for tomorrow. Go over the overview of the 1983 Cosmo season, milestones, some of the milestones, and things of that nature, coaching changes in week one of what took place in 1983. So we move forward into the early 80s, even more, even further, the last part of the early 80s, 83. 1983 season was the last, you know, of the early 80s college football. So, so we begin to the mid 80s. So that concludes this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the channel. Do video this magnitude tomorrow. Till then, talk to you soon.